Hey everyone, this is Nick, and I wasn't always a fan of Pop! OS. I just saw it as yet another distro, I didn't understand what it brought to the table, what it did different than Ubuntu. I just felt it added nothing specific. But after using it for a while on the HP Dev 1 laptop that I reviewed, now I get it. I understand why it's good. I understand it so much that I actually installed it on my new laptop, the Tuxedo Stellaris 15. Yeah, I installed a distro made by System76 on a laptop made by one of its competitors. So, let me tell you why I think Pop! OS is amazing, why I decided to use it on my laptop, but also let me tell you about the things that they really do need to improve. What I can't improve upon though is this segue to today's sponsor, which is going to let you secure your internet connection and ensure that you stay private. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, first let's talk about the install experience. Because yes, Pop! OS can be installed on any device, not just on System76 hardware, like what a lot of people seem to think. Pop! OS doesn't do much new here, apart from letting you download an ISO with or without Nvidia drivers included. This is pretty nice to get them directly for an offline install, you don't have to check a box to get the drivers, and you don't have to download them as you install. Now, most people have access to the internet nowadays, but if you don't, it's handy to have everything you need immediately. And of course, Pop! OS isn't the only one to do that. A lot of other distros also offer the same kind of experience. The installer is basically the one from Elementary OS, except they got to use it first, before Elementary even used it themselves. And it looks a lot better than what Ubuntu, Fedora or Manjaro offer, with very simple guided screens that anyone can get through and it offers encryption by default. It doesn't let you partition the drive yourself, which can be annoying for more experienced users, but I think that for beginners it's better not to drop them into a screen where they could completely destroy their existing install if they are not careful. Welcome to Linux! Your Windows has been erased along with all of your files. Get good, son! User creation is handled at install instead of at first run. I really don't have any preference for this, it's good either way. The first run experience is also pretty good with the traditional GNOME setup tool and a tour of the main features. You get to pick between a few customization options immediately to tailor how the desktop works for you without having to hunt for the option afterwards. Although if you're new and you don't know what each thing does, you might not really understand what you're doing, like choosing to display the workspaces and applications buttons or not. What do these do? Can I re-enable them if I disable them at setup? It's not really clear and I think it would be beneficial for new users to have a few lines of text underneath each option to just say what those buttons do and why you might not want them there. In the end, it's a very simple install and onboarding experience, which feels very polished and that's not something I can say for most other distros. Either their installers look like they're straight from the 2000s or they're extremely technical and complex. Pop! OS strikes a good balance and offers something that is smooth and that is easy to use and it just inspires confidence. But what sets Pop! OS apart is the desktop experience. System76 has been working on turning GNOME into Cosmic, their own desktop that quite radically changes how GNOME works, looks or feels. And in the future, that desktop will not use GNOME Shell as a base. They're redeveloping their own shell in Rust that will work basically in the same way but let them be more reactive with updates than using GNOME extensions. Which, as we all know, are the most stable thing ever invented. After Windows ME, of course. What they've done with the desktop is bring most features that GNOME packs into the activities overview into their own modules. 
By default, you have a dock that can extend to the screen edges or not. You get a big applications launcher that opens as a window, not in full screen, and a dedicated workspaces view, plus a launcher. Each of these modules does only one thing and does it relatively well. It's a matter of personal preference, of course. I do really enjoy the way GNOME packs everything in a single place, but sometimes I also like having a dedicated tool for each job. Which is why I have so many devices. I need them to try out everything. I find the Cosmic Desktop a fantastic experience that you can really tailor to what you like. You can set the dock to auto-height, use all the screens width or not, set it on the sides of the screen instead, change its size, display various icons from mounted drives or the launcher and the application's grid, and even set the action on click on one of its icons. And it even has previews if you have multiple windows of the same app open. Or you can disable the dock entirely if you don't want it. After all, you already have the launcher and the application's grid, so the dock might feel superfluous. Or is it the launcher that is? Or the app's grid? That's the good thing. You decide. All these tools definitely fail parts of the same function. And so you can pick which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't. Same goes with the application's grid. You can open it with the application's button in the top left, or using the dock icon, or set the super key to open it. It opens in a window so it doesn't block out your whole screen and it's got a very nice folder implementation. Instead of having folders in line with the rest of the apps, each folder you create has its own tab in the bottom. So it's way easier to navigate to one, although you do lose the drag and drop reorganization of apps or drag and drop folder creation. You need to click the create folder icon to create one. This grid could definitely benefit from touchpad gestures on laptops though with two finger swipes to quickly move from folder to folder. Yeah, I like my gestures, and as we'll see in the rest of the video, PopOS was found wanting in that regard. And yes, this absolutely was a shameless attempt to keep you watching. Sorry. Now you also get a launcher, which is probably the less accomplished tool implemented here. By default, you open it by hitting Super, or with its icon in the dock. It shows all open windows, and you type to search for applications to open. So again, it's another tool that you can use or not to suit your workflow. So why do I say less accomplished? Well, it can also search through files, recent documents, browse the file system, run a terminal command, perform calculations, do a web search, or even run an sh command. Wait, that seems pretty accomplished to me. Well, yeah, except you do not know that all these features exist unless you know which keyword to use to actually trigger them. You don't just type the name of a document, you have to type find before. You don't just search the web, you have to type Google or DDG, then your query. And it's just not as accessible as the GNOME activities that mix all search results. These keywords can be found by typing a question mark in the launcher. But again, good luck figuring that out by yourself. I think all search types should be displayed by default when you do a regular normal text search, so do applications, documents, commands, everything. And if you want to filter to a specific search, then you use the keyword and you filter to only these types of results. This would let the launcher be a lot more accessible and still retain the exact same power for experienced users. And finally, we get the workspaces view, which is basically the pre-GNOME 40 activities overview with vertical workspaces and an expose view of all your open windows. Simple and efficient, although I do prefer the GNOME 40 implementation with bigger workspaces. It's just easier to navigate for me with bigger click targets. Now, didn't I promise a look at the gestures? Okay, here we go. See, it wasn't clickbait, I delivered on that. Gestures on Pop! OS are a mixed bag. They do exist with four finger swipes up and down to switch workspaces, four fingers to the left to open the workspaces view, and four fingers to the right to open the application's grid. So far, so good, but there are two main issues. First, apart from the virtual desktop switching, they are not one-to-one -one gestures, which means the gesture only performs once you've finished moving. Stuff doesn't move as you move your fingers, and it makes a big difference in smoothness and reactivity, and in understanding what you're doing. Second, the gestures can't be configured. I can't graphically disable the gesture for the app script, or remap four fingers to three fingers, it might be possible through a config file, but not graphically, so it might as well not exist for beginners. 
It's good to have gestures, but elementary OS, GNOME and KDE all have better ones than this. And elementary OS even lets you configure them and they all work on X11 and they're all one-to-one -one gestures as well. So there is a way to do these smooth gestures without using Wayland, like what GNOME or KDE do. So I don't know why PopOS hasn't implemented that, but I really wish they would. And that's about it for the desktop. Now, the theme is take it or leave it. It's a matter of personal preference. I like it in dark mode, but not so much in light mode. The icon theme is okay, and you get the default GNOME apps in a mismatched way, with some apps being on version 42, some on version 41. They seem more up-to-date than what Ubuntu offers, but it's still not the latest and greatest. Probably to keep the dreaded libadvita away, while PopOS figures out a way to reliably theme these apps to keep the desktop consistent. There's also a very handy restore partition being created automatically, and you can update it straight from the settings to make sure that if you need to restore your system, you will not have to perform updates afterwards. And you also have an easy refresh system option that lets you keep your user account and files, but restores the system itself to a clean install. It's a really, really good and well thought out desktop with plenty of options to make your own workflow. And while it lacks a few concessions to user friendliness in explaining what it does and touchpad gestures could be better, I still feel it's one of the best implementations of GNOME I've ever used. And seriously, a recovery partition with a refresh option, that is something that every single distribution should have. Oh, wait, did I forget something? Yeah, the auto-tiling features. PopOS has a really, really great system-wide feature. It lets you switch from a regular window manager with floating windows to a tiling window manager that can be operated from the keyboard entirely. It's right there, up top in the panel. Or you can just press super plus Y and all your windows automatically tile themselves in a sensible way. There, you can either use the mouse to resize them, stack them on top of another to create tabs or move them to a different position. Or you can use the keyboard to do the same. All the shortcuts are explained right in the indicator panel. It lets you add a colored hint onto the active window and even choose the color for that hint. And you can set the spacing between windows as well. And when you want to get your floating windows back, just press super plus Y again, and you're back in normal user mode. Why would you want a tiling window manager that only does tiling when you can have the best of both worlds? Now, no, seriously, I'm seriously asking, why? And if you would prefer certain windows to be floating at all times, you can also set exceptions with an easy window picker that doesn't ask you to type a regex based on a window title. Pretty freaking easy. It is an awesome feature that I would have expected on KDE more than on a GNOME derivative. And if you know me, you know I do not like tiling window managers, precisely because sometimes tiling isn't the best way to handle your windows. Having access to both systems made me use tiling a lot more though, and it's now a reflex I have on my laptop and something I dearly miss on my desktop running Fedora with stock GNOME 42. Okay, let's finish with a few nice things that PopOS does, especially in the software department. PopOS uses the Pop Shop, a graphical app based on the elementary OS app center instead of GNOME software. It looks good and they added an easy way to manage your software sources and preferences graphically. It's very fast and smooth and it's very, very well stocked. PopOS adds their own repos with a bunch of apps that aren't in Ubuntu's repos or are only available as snap packages on Ubuntu. And they ship with FlatHub out of the box. And contrary to elementary OS's App Center, they display all apps in there. This means you get basically everything you might want to install on your Linux box, and with updated versions as well, thanks to Flatpak and their own repo. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a Linux experiment video without a few nitpicks. First, while the App Center is a good base, it's been left in the dust in terms of app presentation, categories, and discovery. GNOME software is now much, much better looking and has way more info about applications, including app permissions for Flatpak, fully readable update notes, or better category pages with some hand-picked apps. Second, if PopOS aims for beginners, I think they should implement some information about the various package type choices. You can pick between Debian packages and Flatpaks, but nowhere is it explained why you would want to pick one over the other. 
maybe a simple text line explaining that the Debian package will only receive security updates and the Flatpak will get all feature updates but might not respect your system theme or something along these lines. Anything would be better for users to understand the choice here. Of course, no one else does that yet either, but I still think it's something that should be implemented in every app store for Linux to let users really understand the differences between package types. At least while we wait for Flatpak to become the only distribution method out there. Okay, now you can go nuts in the comments and tell me how you hate it. PopOS also generally has more up-to-date internals with more recent kernels than Ubuntu, more up-to-date Mesa drivers. They don't limit themselves to just security updates. They do pull in the latest stable versions of a lot of the software stack. This might result in a bit less overall stability, but I still think it's the right move to keep the distro relevant for longer. It's also the only distribution I use that has a good way of switching between integrated graphics and dedicated GPUs on hybrid laptops. So sure, you still need to reboot and the implementation is still very clunky thanks to X11 with horrible screen tearing in Intel mode and hybrid mode when you're using fractional scaling. But at least it's all integrated in the system. No need for third party tools. They could, however, try and implement some fixes for the screen tearing issues. The ones I found online all destroy performance. So, no distro is perfect and PopOS isn't either. Their implementation of Cosmic could be perceived as yet another reinvention of the wheel. And that was my point of view before. I just didn't understand what it brought to the table. But after using it, like really, really using it, not just playing around for five hours, I completely understand why it's great. And it's now one of my favorite desktop experiences ever. It's not another Windows clone or another Mac clone. They have their own workflow with their own tools. It just takes user considerations into account a lot more than most other distros. The addition of a recovery partition, the inclusion of NVIDIA drivers on the ISO, the customization options even on their own opinionated implementation of GNOME, its well-stocked and up-to-date repos, and flat hub out of the box, its default support for hybrid graphics, and the auto-tiling features. It's a lot of stuff tailored for the user. So yeah, PopOS is something special. It's taken what made Ubuntu great and it's expanded on it. Up to the point that I would probably say that PopOS is the new Ubuntu. And yeah, I know that's already something I said about Fedora, but maybe there are multiple new Ubuntus, but in their different ways. Fedora is the new Ubuntu for pushing the envelope and new technologies, and PopOS is the new Ubuntu because it's probably the most user-focused distro out there. And this is why in the future I will absolutely install it on my desktop when I find the time. Fortunately, I just have the time here for this segue to today's sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company that's based in Germany, but they ship worldwide a wide range of desktops and laptops that run Linux out of the box. They let you pick between a few very popular Linux distributions, but you can also install anything else on them, knowing that everything will work perfectly. And if there are a few tweaks needed, they have repositories that you can add to almost anything to add the little configuration options that you might want. All of their devices are super configurable with GPU options, CPU options, SSDs, RAM, and you can even have your own logo engraved on the lid of the laptops, just like I did with the Stellaris 15 I purchased and on which I installed Pop! OS right away. So if you need a new laptop or a new desktop and you wanna make sure that it will run Linux really, really well, then head over to the link in the description below, click it, and grab yourself a tuxedo device. They are really, really good. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you like my videos and you want to help me make more of them, you can support the channel either by clicking on the super thanks button underneath the video or the PayPal link in the description, or you can join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Both links are in the description as well. And both of them get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!